Hello, everybody. Welcome to the session. We're thrilled that you're here with us. The session is on the background paper, which is titled 2.2 Billion Children. How do we ensure their protection and well-being amidst an infectious disease outbreak? My name is Judy Fairholm, and I am co-lead on COVID-19 and child protection with the Alliance. And my other lead is Laura. So Laura, who are you? Thanks for the introduction, Judy. My name is Laura Lee, and I'm the other co-lead uh, with the Alliance on COVID-19. And we are going to dive into a bit of background on the background paper. So Judy, why did we decide to do this topic? Well, Laura, that's a really good question. Because as you know, we were asked to do a paper on something that was really provocative. But then we made a really big list and uh, we had a great discussion and analysis around what to do with this long list and where to start. But as we kept breaking it down and looking at issues and trying to figure out what which is the best path forward, we kept coming to children in that what, although we knew what happened to children in this pandemic in many ways, we wondered and had many questions about what was happening with putting the children at the center of this response. What happened with the best interests of the child? And girding all this, what happened with the child's voice and with child engagement? So where was it? And how did it inform our decisions and work on, with us on our response? So that's how we came up with this. But then we had a very specific model we wanted to examine this under. So what was that, Laura? For this examination, we use the socio-ecological model. The socio-ecological model not only puts the child in the center, but it examines each level, the child, the family, the community, nations and states, and societal and cultur cultural norms. So how does each level impact the child? And it acknowledges the, dyna the dynamic nature between the levels that the child impacts the world around them just as the environment impacts and shapes their lives and opportunities. So as you all know, we can't see the child in isolation, their environment, the decisions that are made at a high level impact their daily life and the actions and lives that children impact the world around them. So the background paper looks at each of these levels and it helps us to explore um, the challenges that are occurring at each level and how to move forward on these. So Judy, what did we learn from this? Well, we learned a lot. And the main thing we learned was that children were seldom asked how COVID-19 was impacting them. And although the rate of children experiencing poverty was accelerating rapidly, and domestic violence was increasing greatly and children were being forced into the labor force in order to keep food on their plates, they were not at the center of the response. And they were, sometimes they were not even a lens through which we were looking at when we were trying to make decisions or process. So we have the Convention on the Rights of the Child and we have the minimum standards. But the big question is, did we use them and did we reflect on them on an ongoing basis as we were trying to apply them to the situations that were developing all over the world? These were often in the midst of uh, mediacy of the pandemic, but we were not prepared for this pandemic. But now we need to learn and we need to use questions to challenge us and decide where we go from the future. So Laura, where are we going to go from here? As the, uh, many of the panel speakers spoke about this morning, we, child protection and humanitarian actors have done an incredible job adapting in the moment, but children still face many, many risks. So we need to figure out how do we do better next time? We need to examine our actions and our inactions from past infectious disease outbreaks and from COVID-19 so far and determine how to better prevent 
and respond to child protection risks. This helps us to prepare for future infectious disease outbreaks and waves of COVID-19 as we're seeing already globally. Um, and we can do this as child protection and humanitarian actors. So what do we need to do to put children at the center? How can we engage with them in a way that doesn't increase their risks, but informs us how to make the right decisions and operationalize them? So these are big questions and it'll take all of us to figure out how to do this well. So for the next 20 minutes, we're going to ask questions. We're going to do a few questions, put you in breakout rooms and pick your brains as well. And then on day three, on Wednesday, we're gonna build on today's discussion and start making a plan. So we need all your experiences there. So please do attend. On their chat box, you'll see a Mentimeter link. And this is what you click on in order to access the poll that is going up. And this question, the first question is asking you from your perspective, what are the key challenges you and your colleagues face in your work to protect children during COVID-19? So please go to that link and click your answer. Okay, so the result, and we acknowledge that obviously the other um, recommend the other key challenges that were posted in the chat aren't reflected here, but here we see that technology was the highest with um, child participation next, or it could be community participation as well, just participation. Um, then sectoral silos was considered the next, followed by economic challenges, psychosocial support um, with capacity building, risk assessment, um, following that collaboration and then communication, and then we'll compile the answers that were in the other. Thanks, Jessica. And the next slide. Okay, so children need to be at the center of any and all decisions made during infectious disease outbreaks. And we know that this is a big statement and question with a lot of ethical issues attached to it, but there's an overwhelming agreement that 4.4 oh, it keeps changing, 4. very 4. exciting. Changing. Out of five, um, believe that children need to be at the center. Thank you. We are now going to move to breakout rooms for a few minutes. Now, if you are attending thematic sessions and then our full day sessions on days three and four, you'll do this, you'll get the hang of doing this quite a bit. Um, but this, for this time, we will go into breakout rooms. You will be given a prompt and please click on join breakout room. And you're going to discuss a question, uh, what has to be done to put children at the center within the child protection response during infectious disease outbreaks? What has to be done to put children at the center? And so you'll have about seven minutes to discuss this as a group. Um, please click on um, the, is it the Google Doc, Jessica, that will give you a link yeah. to a Jamboard. You'll look at your group number and find the link. And even if a few of you in the group can do this and write down the ideas, that's great. Once you get to this Jamboard, on the left-hand column, there's a box that you can click on to add a note. This is like a sticky note. It's almost like we're in a conference room with a whiteboard and we're brainstorming together. This is a way to capture some of the thoughts that you're, that you're talking about in your own groups. And so you'll click on your group number to that Jamboard, go to the left-hand column, find the box, and you can add a sticky note. Anybody who's on this Jamboard can include their own notes, but you can also have people just include notes that other people in the room are saying. So not everybody has to has to do it. Okay, so Jessica I'm sharing the screen. Um, Thank you so much. This is the Jamboard. And she's just clicked the left-hand column where there's that square with the writing. Click sticky note and you can put some thoughts. So you'll have about five minutes or so to work on this as a group. Okay, okay. I will so your breakout groups breaks. and see you after. Welcome back everyone.
Okay, thank you so much for your participation in that activity. I hope you were able to engage in a bit of meaningful dialogue. I know it's short. Feel free to finish your thoughts on your Jamboard as we finish up. And that's just a teaser of uh, some of the interactive activities we'll do um, in the coming days and especially on Wednesday around this topic. Okay, you can share the slides, Jessica. So we just want to conclude the session um, highlighting children's voices. So as 16 year old girl in, in Kenya said, I would ask the leader to allow teachers back to school and put in place measures that will protect us and enable us to learn to ensure that our families have food since there has been shortage. And an 11 year old boy in Colombia says to find a way to help children like my brother and me who are migrants and my mother who doesn't have a real job, others who need help, children on the streets, grandparents that need help and attention, and especially children like my sister who requires psychological help so that she can communicate like us, for us to have opportunities to go to school and be able to study, jobs for our parents so that they don't fight, shout, or abuse each other. And more children's voices. From a girl in Kosovo, please pay closer attention to the children. Throughout this time, we've only heard about COVID-19 rules and they've only increased panic. They were also only dealing with political issues. No one bothered about our mental and physical health. And then a the girl in Nicaragua, 11 years old, but they think about the health of girls and boys who do not have the conditions for protection and the rights to live without violence and with the freedom of ex expression are fulfilled. So we're hoping that you take these kids' voices throughout this conference and that we are constantly reminded that we need to be listening we need to be learning from them and we need to be engaging them. So thank you so much for being part of our session. And the big reminder is that this is just the kickoff for day three, because on day three, we're going to delve really deeply into all of this and we need you there and we need your brains. So please be there for day three. And now you get to take a 10 minute break so you can get a cup of tea or coffee and you can make your way into whichever room you'd like to join for the next session. Please note that while the speakers between the first five topic sessions and the sessions later this, later this afternoon will mostly change, the overarching topics and themes remain the same. This will give you an opportunity to join discussions uh, surrounding more than one topic. So really get in there and enjoy them. I was thrilled to see in the little breakout room I was in that people just jumped in and were talking. So that's great. So all you need to do is leave this room room, find the session you're interested in by Kiko chat, click to join that room and then click the green Zoom link button to join the meeting in Zoom. So you can do that now before you take your break in order to ensure that you're in the session that you want to go in. And then you can mute yourself and turn off your video and step away and get that cup of tea or coffee. Uh, session five is going to be in Spanish. So Spanish speakers can go into that one if you want to go into a session that is uh, fully in Spanish and there's going to be no translation service in that Spanish. So the next sessions will start properly, enjoy, and hope you keep in mind through all the sessions, what have been the children's voices? What are the kids telling us? Thank you. See you later and on day three. <laughs>